Hey folks, okay, this is just a quick little video um, about the uh, SSL UC1 and the, the native channel strip uh, plugin that comes with it. Uh, I wanted to cover something that I haven't seen covered really in any videos. Um, you know, maybe everybody just assumes it's obvious and you know, and I'm an idiot, but, <laughs> but, uh, I think it's the other way. I think it's that, you know, nobody's really utilizing this to its full potential. Uh, and the, the, this I'm talking about is side chaining, um, on, on these channel strip, uh, plugins. Um, I feel like SSL kind of tucked it away. Like they didn't expect a lot of the people buying this to know what that was or to really use it that well. Um, there's very, there's, there's actually not, um, dedicated hardware on the controller for it, which is annoying. Um, and it would have really come in handy. You have to go to the plugin to, to, I mean, to really, you know, do full control. Um, so I guess, um, you know, uh, real quick, uh, you know, what side chaining is, is, uh, particularly, um, well, it's controlling one sound um, with either an entirely different sound or an equalizer or a filter. And that's really what um, the, the choices are. Uh, oops. Um, so you see there it says dynamic sidechain, filter, EQ, and external. Those are the three choices, right? So... Um, what that and then there's these different configurations you can choose um which you can use the hardware controller uh to dial through those things um here it would be under routing and then there are these basically these presets you know and you can cho choose these different things um so like what you're seeing there is like the filter which is the high and low and low pass filters um, are, would be um, used in the detection circuit of the dynamics, so of, of the compressor. Um, and so, in other words, if I'm filtering out, you know, everything below 100 hertz, um, it's also going to do that in the detection circuit of the compressor. Now the compressor itself should not do that filtering, but but it won't trigger off of anything below 100 hertz. Very very useful when you're compressing a mix or or a whole drum kit, and you don't you know you don't want the kick drum that's louder than everything making the entire kit squash or the entire mix squash. You know you want it to ignore that very low end and trigger off of you know, everything above, you know, that, that amount. Um, so that's, that's one application. There's actually many applications. You can DS a vocal by making the trigger, you know, anywhere from, you know, three to seven K or whatever. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of applications for, um, for, you know, for side chain compression or, um, you know, another one is, uh, is the relationship between the kick drum and the bass. Um, so like you can actually make the bass duck a little bit every time the kick drum hits, uh, it makes the kick pop through a little bit more. So, uh, these are, um, you yeah, this is really, really useful stuff. Uh, this is your bread and butter everyday thing for experienced, uh, mixing engineers. And again, I feel like they kind of tucked it away. I, you know, I know about this stuff and I had to go looking for it. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're in the plugin, and you have this display, you know, like, like in particular, this part here where you're choosing between the filters, the EQ and external, that doesn't exist on the hardware. You have to do that on, on the plugin. Um, and with the external, that really depends on which DAW you're using. So for instance, um, I'm in Nuendo, which is like Cubase and it's VST based. So up here, we have set up side chain routing, right? And then I would choose the source. So if this was a bass channel, I would choose kick drum. 
right? And that would be my source. And then you activate it there. And here you would choose external, right? Boom, my base is being triggered. You know, my, my, my dynamics on my base channel are being triggered off of the kick drum. And that's a neat you know, trick. It's not really a trick, it's a tool. Um, and again, like, you know, people that mix all the time that, you know, this is, this is bread and butter. This is something, you know, you do all the time. Um, it's how you, it's one of the ways you make, you get clarity in a mix. It's one of the ways you get clarity on the low end of a mix. That's you know, usually so hard to do. Um, so, you know, I looked and I, I couldn't find a single video that talked about this. Even the manual for the software was a little opaque about this. Like it's not well explained anywhere. So uh, I hope that this is helpful for people. And, you know, I may drop a link to this video in, uh, you know, in the forum, the Facebook forum for the UC one. Um, you know, it's, it's a really useful thing. And I really wish they hadn't tucked it away so much that they made it a little more obvious. Um, all right, cool. Happy mixing, everybody. It, this is an awesome system. I'm loving it. And, you know, I, I do appreciate that at least we have these choices. You know, it, it, this is what really puts, you know, this system over the top is being able to do stuff like that. All right. Take care.